CBS 6 News starts now. When we found out that, wait, where did the water go? Then all, all of us were scared, you know, we're like, okay, are we going to be able to manage? Businesses in Troy hoping to bounce back after a water main break. Meanwhile, the former president says he could be indicted as soon as Tuesday. What we know about the investigation. And hiring down, retirement up. What some police agencies are doing to hire and why some former officers are against it. Good evening, everybody. I am Tom Eschen. This the scene in Troy on Friday morning. A CDTA bus pulled out of a hole caused by a water main break on Federal Street. Crews then spent hours replacing the 24-inch pipe. Thanks to their hard work, water was restored quickly for everybody in Troy. But then we saw a ripple effect as other communities using that Troy line as their main water source felt an impact. Rensselaer and East Greenbush each issuing conserve water advisories. Those, though, have since been lifted at this hour. Today, that hole in Troy is now fresh pavement. Businesses say they're concerned, though, about the city's current infrastructure, worried more water main breaks could impact their business in the future. CBS 6's Emma Quinn spoke to some residents in Troy today. A dry, patchy road is what's left after a chaotic morning in Troy Friday when a water main break caused conserve water advisories and a CDTA bus getting stuck in the ground. We were ready for a Friday lunch crowd that never showed up. Downtown businesses like Little Pecks on Broadway were challenged by the water supply being cut off. It interrupted our lunch service yesterday. We had to send six members of staff home. After the water turned on, those challenges didn't go away. We were concerned about the water quality. We have an advanced filtration system here, uh, but the water was still very cloudy. And because of that, we went to Price Chopper and uh, purchased uh, eight gallons of bottled water for our cold brew. Despite the cloudy water, officials say the water was safe to drink. Meanwhile, down the street at Cafe Euphoria, business saw a benefit from the issue. Chops down the road, which lost um, water. So as a consequence, a number of customers came to he here instead, and which was actually good for us. Luckily, the cafe hosts events and had gallons of water in-house. Uh, it meant that the bathrooms were out of com commission for a while, so we're worried about that. But businesses have differing opinions on the city's aging infrastructure and the chance another could occur. It's happened before. It'll happen again. Uh, these buildings are old. The city's old. Uh, but it's almost like a 69 Camaro. It's like a beautiful old sports car, but it needs constant tune-ups and adjustments. You know, as a business, we do worry about these things. You know, when we found out that, wait, where did the water go? Then all, all of us were scared. You know, we're like, okay, are we going to be able to manage? But we try to be resilient. And so, okay, we quickly assessed which of the dishes can we make. Residents have been pushing city officials to make infrastructure a priority. Reporting in Troy, Emma Quinn, CBS 6 News. Thank you very much for that, Emma. We now take a live look at Troy here tonight as we get to our Weather Authority first forecast. Sam Coplin is here with us tonight. Hey, Sam, we got some snow coming in, it looks like. Yeah, we do have some snow, but the big story will be the big chill coming. A big change in pace this morning. It felt like March. Tomorrow it's going to feel like January. Breezy and cold conditions with a piece of Arctic air moving on through. Obviously, it's modified a little bit, but yes, this air mass did originate in the Arctic. You could make out right now where the front is pushing through. Winds are spiking behind it. It's close to 40 mile per hour gusts in Watertown and Syracuse. Winds are going to slowly increase here tonight and especially during the day tomorrow. We also have some snow showers associated with the front. A steady burst from Fulton, Montgomery down through Schoharie County. They will start to diminish as they push closer to the capital region. But over the next hour to two hours as this front drives through, there could be a quick coating of snow, a burst of snow known as a snow squall could reduce visibility for, again, 15, 20 minutes. But the big story with this won't be the snow. It will be the temperatures dropping. Take a look at these current wind chills. It feels like eight in Detroit, six in Marquette, three in Minneapolis. A piece of that air mass is going to be moving through tonight, and especially you'll feel it tomorrow. So January chill to end the weekend, but then spring fever to follow. Unsettled possible late week. We'll talk about all these things and more in your full forecast. Well, you can track some of that snow and your weather updates anytime with the CBS 6 Weather Authority app. Find that in your app store by searching WRGB. Right now, Albany police are looking for the gunman after a shooting overnight. Around 2 this morning, authorities were called to a shooting on Broadway near Lawn Avenue. That's where they found a man with gunshot wounds. Police say that man was taken to Albany Medical Center. We're working to get an update on his condition. 
We're also working to learn if any charges will be filed after a fight led to a stabbing early this morning. And right now, we know officers were called to Hamilton Street for a stabbing just before 3. They found two men with stab wounds. Both men are expected to survive. Developing now here tonight, former President Donald Trump says he will be indicted next week as a part of a hush money investigation by Manhattan's district attorney. A CBS 6 News correspondent Michael George reports the announcement comes as his campaign announced he will hold a rally next Saturday. Former President Donald Trump posted on his social media blog that he'll be arrested on Tuesday and called for protests. He wrote that illegal leaks from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office indicate that the far and away leading Republican candidate and former President of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Trump attended the NCAA Wrestling Championship in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Saturday. A New York grand jury is weighing an indictment of the former president in a case examining hush money paid to women who alleged sexual encounters with him. Trump has denied all wrongdoing. At a conservative forum Saturday, Senator Lindsey Graham said if he were Trump, he would take the matter to the Supreme Court. So I think this is an effort that's ongoing, never ending to destroy Donald Trump. Former Vice President Mike Pence answered questions about the case. The idea of indicting a former president of the United States is deeply troubling to me as it is to tens of millions of Americans and particularly happening in what appears to be a politically charged environment. An attorney for Trump told CBS News the former president's comments about an imminent arrest are speculation. A Trump spokesperson said in part, there has been no notification other than illegal leaks from the Justice Department and the DA's office. In a tweet, Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy called the potential indictment an outrageous abuse of power by a radical DA. He said he's directing relevant committees to investigate if federal funds are being used to, quote, subvert our democracy by interfering in elections with politically motivated prosecutions. In a statement, former Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the grand jury's consideration of this case makes clear no one is above the law, not even a former president of the United States. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Citing four law enforcement officials, the Associated Press is reporting that law enforcement officials in New York are making security preparations for the possibility that former President Trump could be indicted in these coming weeks and appear in a Manhattan court. A wartime deal allowing Ukraine to export grain through the Black Sea despite Russia's invasion has been extended. The United Nations and Turkey's president announced the renewed agreement today, but did not confirm how long it would last. While Ukraine pushed for 120 days, Russia warned it would not allow the deal to go on longer than 60 days. The UN and Turkey helped broker the first agreement over fears of a global food crisis. Ukraine is one of the world's top producers of grain. Russian warships blocked the country's access to ports in the Black Sea in February last year. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin is in Crimea today to mark the ninth anniversary of Moscow's annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula. Putin stopped by an art school and a children's center in what Russian state media is calling a surprise visit. The trip comes just one day after the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Putin, accusing the Russian leader of illegally deporting hundreds of children from Ukraine. Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. applauded the decision yesterday and called for further action. All the horrific war crimes and atrocities they, they committed in Ukraine, all of that should be uh, brought to the account. All of that should be uh, investigated not only in Ukraine but in international courts. But it's very symbolic. Putin has not publicly commented on the warrant, but a Kremlin spokesperson did call it outrageous and unacceptable. Russia seized Crimea in 2014, eight years before it invaded Ukraine. A controversial move to hire police officers is getting some pushback from former cops. The national desk, Angela Brown, joins us now. Fox 5 in New York is reporting that the NYPD is dropping the requirement that recruits run a timed 1.5 mile in 14 minutes and 21 seconds, and some former cops don't like it. Former NYPD Chief of Training Juanita Holmes told the New York Post the time run is not needed to be a cop saying no one's chasing anyone a mile and a half. Dropping the timed run bothers retired sergeant and current police trainer Betsy Smith. But when you have to be physical, you have to be very physical. 
and your life or the life of someone else may absolutely depend on your physical fitness and your cardiovascular fitness. The battle over police fitness standards picking up nationwide. There's a lot of people watching whether New Hampshire is going to get rid of this three-year test. And here's the bill that could do just that in New Hampshire. It repeals the police standards and training council physical fitness requirements for certified law enforcement officers and the penalty for not meeting those requirements. The director of the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training is open to moving in a new direction. I think if we were given the opportunity to revisit what we're using for testing and uh, trying to find something that is going to be more functionally uh, related to the job of a police officer. New Hampshire Representative Michael Abbott sponsoring the bill for this reason. Have difficulty in recruiting and retaining police officers. Police agencies across the country are struggling to hire and retain. The Police Executive Research Forum surveyed 184 police agencies. Key findings? Hiring of new officers during 2020 decreased 20.5 percent compared to the year before. And there were 42.7 more resignations in 2021 than in 2019. Why are we having a hard time recruiting police officers? I don't think it's because I know it's not because of the fitness testing. It's because there is just an all out war on cops. An NYPD spokesperson telling Fox News the decision to drop the timed run came after state law changed in 2021, but officers have to meet other physical requirements. Reporting in Washington, D.C., I'm Angela Brown. Well, it's a sign spring is inching closer, rather slowly. Guptill's opening day coming up, the flavor making its debut this season. And a wish comes true for an area teen. His front row seat to March Madness and plans the hoop in the future next. Welcome back. 20 Amsterdam restaurants and bars transforming into Irish pubs today for the city's 7th annual St. Paddy's Day Pub Fest. That even included pizza shops and bakeries getting in on the celebration, of course, for St. Patrick's Day. But residents also telling us they cherish the opportunity to get together as a community. One of the most vibrant days of the year in Amsterdam, and they're working to create more. But people are just, um, they're just responding to these community events. And it's, uh, we've noticed more and more people are participating. And I think it's because people are so happy they can come together again in an event like this versus a couple of years ago when we couldn't. And I just think it's, it's really steamrolling. They say with the nice weather compared to last year, there was a bigger turnout and hope to bring more life to the town in the coming months with events like this. Well, nicer weather, and we had some nice weather today for Guptill's Ice Cream in Latham for opening for the season and unveiling a brand new flavor Soft Pineapple Dole Whip. All right, 11.30, sounds good. It's the newest of the 80 flavors of hard and soft ice cream they serve, opening for the 29th year here in the Capital Region. Spring starts on Monday, but thousands are already prepared for warmer weather with some ice cream today. It's the best job on earth, let me tell you. Just to make everyone happy and smile and laugh and just see each other again. And, you know, being outside has been nice, too. Guptills has been coined the king of soft serve by the Capital Region community. Oh, isn't that nice, Sam? Some ice cream, and I don't know if tomorrow will be the best day, but hey, I'm an ice cream in any weather yeah, kind of guy. Ice cream works in any weather, but tomorrow's definitely more like, feels like January. I don't mm. think tomorrow's the best ice cream day. All right, well, that's, right that's the newest addition to your forecast, right? <laughs> Okay, well, it is, yeah, as I mentioned, it's not going to be an ice cream day tomorrow. January chill at, is moving through as we speak, a front driving through, and we're actually seeing some snow showers breaking across the area. We have a piece of Arctic air originated actually from the Arctic, obviously modified a bit, but that is driving on through right now, and over the next few hours, you'll really start to notice the difference, and when you wake up tomorrow, for sure. So let's take a look at the wind chills. It feels like 32 in Albany, but then on the other side of this front, it feels like 7 in Toronto and 8 in Detroit. This piece 
this air mass, a piece of that, is going to be driving through. And already right now, the snow showers are kind of initiating the cold air. They're breaking out from, say, Saratoga Springs down through Schenectady, Burns, so moving into western Albany County. Actually, we look at our Fryhofer sky cam right now in Amsterdam, and the snow is falling down very quickly. So this is what you're going to get with this. It's a 15, maybe 30-minute period of steady snow. Just going to be a brief shot, but as we're seeing right in this shot, the, our Fryhofer's camera, uh, it could reduce visibility and snow could be coming down at a steady clip. And then behind it, the winds are really going to kick up. So temperature trend after the front passes through, we bottom out in, say, the low 20s. But we don't move a whole lot during the day tomorrow, partly to mostly cloudy skies and a gusty wind. So those temperatures on the thermometer may read 30 to 35, but it's going to feel a lot colder than that. Watch out tonight. Those snow showers drive through the area. They will start to diminish, but as we're already seeing, not quick enough to prevent the area from seeing some snow showers. But then by 2 a.m., the last of the snow showers move through the area, and we actually go from partly to mostly clear skies. Now, tomorrow, the snow is basically going to be focused well north and west of the area. The lake effect machine is going to be turned on with this type of pattern. It really causes lake effect snow to develop in Herkimer and Hamilton County are under a winter weather advisory because of that could get several inches of snow up there and actually guidance is showing that some of these snow showers could even make it all the way down to the capital region during the afternoon tomorrow. So you have temperatures in the 30s, some snow in the air and then a biting wind tonight after the front passes through actually within the next hour wind gusts are going to spike maybe 25 to 30 miles per hour and then tomorrow but morning throughout the afternoon, wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit higher than that in the higher terrain. So you take wind gusts close to 40 miles per hour and temperatures in the 30s, and that's not what it's going to feel like on the skin. It's going to feel like the teens to low 20s. That's why we're saying it's March, but feeling more like January tomorrow. It is a quick shot of cold air, though. So tomorrow, the heart of the cold's over us. And then watch this. By Monday, we already bounce back. 52 in Albany, so could even be a few degrees above average just in time for spring on Monday. And then Tuesday, we could even do a little bit better than that. So just one day of this harsh cold, and then it's smooth sailing the rest of the week. For tonight, upper teens to low 20s, cloudy early, turning blustery. Snow squalls, as we're seeing right now, through about 1 a.m., and those wind gusts are going to spike as well. And then tomorrow, thermometer is going to read 30 to 35, but feeling a lot colder than that when you have wind gusts 35, if not higher than that. Snow north and west of the area and even a few snow showers could get into the capital region during the afternoon tomorrow. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. And as I said, just one cold day, and then we're running a uh, nice streak at or above average just in time for spring, 524 p.m. on Monday. And then our next precipitation chance just looks like it's in the form of rain as temperatures are going to be in the 50s. Thank you, Sam. Prep work begins for one of the largest all-female 5Ks in the country. How you can get help if you're training for the Fryhofer's run. Plus, it's a hobby shared by everyone from celebrities to five-year-olds. We get a glimpse into the world of model trains. That's next. Welcome back. Ladies, it's time to get your sneakers ready as the Fryhoffers Run for Women Training Challenge kicks off on Monday. The 45th annual Fryhoffers Run for Women scheduled for June 3rd. This is video of last year's run with nearly 3,000 participants. Registration for the Training Challenge is $55 and it includes a 12-week membership to the Capital District YMCA, a clinic, fun group activities, and a Training Challenge t-shirt. The first meeting is Monday at 6 at the crossings of Colony. Nearly 300 women have signed up for the challenge so far, and you can join now through April 8th. As you can see here on your screen, some of the information there if you're interested in attending. And you can join through April 8th, as I mentioned. Building model railways are a hobby of well-known celebrities like Michael Jordan, Tom Hanks, even Bruce Springsteen. The passion for the craft had to start somewhere, and today in Albany, people young and old getting their start. The biannual Albany train show at the Polish Community Center featuring more than 100 tables of trains. This their March edition, but today an opportunity for seasoned collectors or first-time builders to get a glimpse of what it's all about. Model railroading is really a great opportunity for people to build their own world. The trains running around are great, but this is the golden age of model railroading where you can create your own world in your basement. They were also giving free appraisals and realistic miniature tree clinics. They'll be back again for more in November. 
Well, buddy, residents have the NCAA tournament in their backyard this weekend. And tomorrow, a 14-year-old will have a very special experience because of that. Today, Upstate Chevy Dealer is granting 14-year-old Garnet Turner's wish of going to an NCAA tournament game with four tickets to Sunday's action. But not only that, also building a basketball court in his backyard. He wants to have a tournament out there of his own this summer. He'll be watching closely when he sees the current college athletes go at it on Sunday. It has colleges that are playing in there, so then I have an idea of for like when I go to college to play for the March Madness or whatever. All I have to say is thank you so much for the tickets. Um, it's very dull for you. I, I can't say thank you enough. That's awesome. He received four tickets from Nick DeNoyer today and says he hopes to play basketball not only in college, but in the NBA down the road. Now let's send it over to AJ with sports. And what a great story there. And coming up in sports, we're going to have a lot of high school basketball to get to. Find out if any of our local teams were able to punch their ticket to the state finals right after the break. And now, CBS 6 Sports, sponsored by your local Upstate Chevy dealers. Hey, I'm AJ Pankowski in Sports Tonight. March Madness has been the topic of discussion all week long in the Capital Region. But with no games today at MVP Arena, we shift our focus over to high school hoops because we're in the state Final Fours. Four Section 2 teams in action earlier today, so let's jump right on into it. We're going to start off in Class C for a semifinal matchup between the defending state champs out of Millbrook and the undefeated 26-0 Greenwich Witches. What a dream season it's been for Greenwich, but they ran into a buzzsaw today. Not much to show from them because in the third quarter an eight point Millbrook halftime lead would turn into a blowout. The Blazers outscored the Witches 20 to 5 in the third alone. They were red hot from the floor and from there Millbrook coasted to the state title game with a 70 to 52 victory over Greenwich. To our second girls game this one the Class D semifinal earlier this morning between Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons and Oxford Academy. The Lady Golden Knights were playing from behind the entire day but it was close early on as that three cuts the deficit to three but in in the second half, it was all Oxford Academy. They were hitting shots from all over the floor, and Bishop Gibbons seemed to have no answer for that. A lead that was once a one-possession game ballooned to over 20 points as Oxford Academy rolled to victory. Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons falls in the state final four, 75 to 54. Over to the boys' Class D state semis in North. It's North Warren taking on Chapel Field Christian. This one was a battle starting in the fourth. Cougars down one, but Elijah Horgie giving North Warren the lead with that three. They extend the lead to six, but the Lions would have an answer. A three of their own. One possession game with two to play to the final seconds. North Warren up one. The drive from Liam Powell and the shot falls. Chapel Field up one now. Last chance for the Cougars. In the half court, prayer is off the mark. What a game. What a shot. Shot by the Lions, Chapel Field Christian advances to the Class D state title, 47-46. Well, we're 0 for 3 so far on teams making it to the finals from Section 2. Last chance here, Catholic Central took on Southampton in Class B. First ever Final Four appearance for the Crusaders, but they played like they've been there before. That three falls from Symir Roberson. The three ball, friendly all day. Roberson again from deep. He connects again. Shortly after, Roberson's teammates want to get in on the fun. Nick Riley, he drills that three. Crusaders pulling away late, but Southampton, they would stay within striking range. But when it was all said and done, after all the late game fouls, that's the exclamation point. A dunk to seal it. Catholic Central, they're going to their first ever state title, winning 65 52. They're going to take on West Hill out of Section 3 tomorrow for the championship. And finally, just as a friendly reminder, MVP Arena going to be host to a couple March Madness second round games tomorrow night. In the first of the doubleheader, UConn facing St. Mary's. Albany Academy alum and current UConn Husky Andre Jackson Jr. getting to play again in front of the hometown crowd. He had 10 points in the game Thursday night. Over 500 family and friends there to see him, and they're going to be back tomorrow for him as well. And in the nightcap, Miami taking on Indiana, and we're going to have game recap and scores in sports tomorrow night. And guys, what a tournament so far. Upsets everywhere. 
and it's only day three. It's been really cool seeing all the people in town as well. I was up at the Capitol doing some work on Friday, and there was people taking pictures in front of the buildings and things like that. Even though it was kind of a rainy day, it uh, looks like tomorrow's going to be a little colder for everybody in yeah, town, yeah. right? Tomorrow is going to be a little bit colder. This is a one-shot thing, but tomorrow's going to feel like January. Temperature's going to read 35, but feel like we are in the 20s to teens, and then after that, feeling like spring, just in time for spring on Monday, coming in at 524 in the afternoon. I think our weather upset this week was the snowstorm in March, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. That was the big, that was the 16 over one, getting a foot of snow in the middle of March. Didn't stop anybody from going to MVP Arena. Though. It's true. <laughs> the they cleared the snow packed. out of there pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, kudos to the Department of uh, Public Works and all that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys, and thank you once again for joining us here tonight. Have a good night, everybody.